I married my best friend. We have been inseparable for close to 45 years. I see less of the man that I knew, that I love, that I honor and cherish. I see less of him every day. Delmer grew up in uh, southern Indiana, and it was just common to go out squirrel hunting. From an early age, probably 10 or 12, he would take it, the gun out and go hunting and wouldn't think anything about it. Guns have just been a part of our lives. Even with Delmer with his dementia, we still go out shooting with our family. We do target practice. Uh, we've not gone hunting for several years because of his COPD. He can't maneuver out in the woods anymore. With dementia, you learn that there are no patterns, so you never know what to expect. He became more difficult to live with. He would become angry when he couldn't find a word or be able to do something that he normally could do. Our dear Father in heaven, as we come to thee this day, we thank thee for all of thy blessings. We thank he thee would that attempt to hit me. I started one day thinking about his gun. He did keep a loaded 38 Ruger in his chair. And I began to be concerned because his anger was so unpredictable. One minute he'd be fine and the next he would, he would be exploding. Isn't that where your pistol is? Yeah, see, I got one pistol and I got a, a collection of knives. I cannot protect him and be a caregiver to him if I'm frightened or being abused. My mother. Her, her mother's gun. What is it? It's a, I don't know, I don't know what brand. 410. Huh? 410. He is my priority. And whatever I have to do to protect myself, I'll do. One day when he was coherent, I talked to him about the gun. And I said, I'm just concerned that someday you may not be aware of what's going on and use the gun in an inappropriate way. And he said, I don't disagree. And I said, well, what do you think about if I just took your pistol and hit it? And we talked about it because he's aware that something is wrong. He, I mean, you can't live with dementia and not know something is wrong. Well, we talked about it, and it had to be done. <coughs> I, I'm not down to her. She's not down to me. It's a fact. I got a disease that I don't know the name of, and uh, and eventually, it, anything can happen. So I want to protect her. I want to protect myself, start with. She might shoot faster than me. <laughs> he seemed to be okay with it. I think occasionally he feels kind of out of the loop. And I can't say he's thrilled about it, but he understands it. He's shorter than I am now, so he can't reach this. And it's a, so uh, it's a box full of socks, heavy socks, and stockings, and s extra stockings, and stuff like that. But down in the bottom is his gun. And it's unloaded. We did not try to do this when he was delusional. And I think that that made the big difference. He was rational. Well, I, I don't think any difference, but I know I can't do what I used to do. I, I just can't do it no more. But that's the facts of life. I'm not going to go bad and kill people or kill myself or nothing else. I can't do anything about it. And then if you believe in the hereafter, I want to be pretty good so I don't miss out on that. <laughs> 
walked his horse along the If he were to do something in his incoherent state, I would feel awful. And to be honest, I'm not sure he's even able at this point to load a gun. He thinks he can. He can't.